Denji is the main protagonist of the Chainsaw Man anime and manga series. A devil hunter from the start, Denji inherits his father's debts and ends up working as a devil hunter for the Yakuza when he meets Pochita, a small devil that appears to be a tiny orange canine with a chainsaw protruding from its forehead. Denji is later betrayed by the Yakuza who were under the control of the zombie devil. After being stabbed in the heart multiple times and completely cut apart, Pochita becomes Denji's heart, and the two continue their life, becoming public safety devil hunters first under Makima and later Aki. He also balances his work life as the Chainsaw Man Devil Hunter with his school life as a student of 4th East High School during the second part of the series. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Also, be sure to check and see if you're still subscribed. YouTube has been unsubscribing people lately for whatever reason, and we just want to make sure that you don't miss out on any more of our videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. Spoiler warning. This video is the history of Denji from Chainsaw Man, as I'm sure you knew when you clicked on the video. This goes beyond the current anime into the original manga. As such, there may be spoilers in the video if you are anime only. Set in an alternate timeline in which the Soviet Union never dissolved, the world is inhabited by humans and devils. The devils originate in hell, no surprise there, and both are born of and embody the fears of humanity. These fears, when defeated and devoured by the Chainsaw Devil, are returned to hell and that concept is removed from the world along with the memories of everyone except for the Chainsaw Devil and the Four Horsemen. Speaking of the Four Horsemen, they exist here too and are incredibly strong, nearly rivaling the power of the Primal Fears, a group of devils that exist in hell and have never been killed. Pochita has been locked in battle with the Primal Fears and the Four Horsemen when he was defeated and sent to Earth in a weakened form resembling a dog. This is where Denji finds him. The story begins with a young man having inherited his father's debts to the Yakuza. To get rid of the debt, he makes some tough decisions, including fighting devils, the first of which we see being a tomato devil, because people are afraid of tomatoes. Beyond that, he's been removing parts of his body to sell on the black market to help quicken his freedom. He sells off a kidney and a few other parts that are best left unmentioned. Desperate times. He says that killing the tomato devil will get him 300,000 yen, and so wielding Pochita like a chainsaw, he goes in and kills it like a boss. However, after the old man subtracts his debt and other expenses from the payment, Denji is only left with 70,000 yen. But Denji is further depressed when he learns what his water bill will cost him, and is only left with 1,800. They then need something to eat as they have nothing at home, and the best they can do is a slice of bread. Meanwhile, the old man is in his car with his driver, the latter of which asks why he's using Denji as a devil hunter, and if it's it's really okay to use him like that. The old man states that Denji's father died without paying off his debt and now that debt is inherited by Denji. The driver then pulls up to Denji and dares him to eat his cigarette for 100 yen. Denji does so without shame or hesitation as he really needs the cash. The driver speeds off and says that he'll reach out to him if another devil appears and warns him not to skip town. However, the 100 yen buys them another 3 days worth of food. Denji in his little home eats a single slice of bread and notes to Pochita that his life will never be normal, something that he laments. He knows he can never ask a girl over since it's expensive to date anyway, but he hopes that one day before he dies he can at least hug a girl. We then see a flashback. Denji stands before a grave. It's revealed that Denji's father had committed suicide before he paid his monthly debts to the Yakuza, and the old man from before is seen in this flashback where he demands that Denji pay up. He gives Denji a little time to get the money, saying he doesn't care how he does it, just do it. Left alone, Denji sees Pochita and exclaims that it's a devil. He tells it to hurry up and just kill him as he's going to die anyway. Pochita then reveals that it's hurt. Denji offers up his blood, knowing that it'll save its life, something that the devil accepts. Denji then states that it isn't charity and that Pochita is entering a contract with him. We next see Denji having killed the devil. He then asks if the old man would hire him as a devil hunter. Denji then tells Pochita after the end of the flashback that he just wants to fall asleep in a girl's arms after having played some video games. A small dream, but one worth chasing. Pochita agrees to it as well. Suddenly though, Denji coughs up blood. He informs the little chainsaw devil that his mother did something similar in the past and that it was a symptom of the heart disease that she had. Things just keep turning to crap on our poor protagonist, but don't worry, when you're at rock bottom, there's nowhere to go but up. Suddenly there's a knock at the door. The old man informs Denji that there is another devil that needs to be killed. Denji gets in the car with the old man and heads to an old factory building where the car suddenly stops. 
Denji mentions that he sees no devil, and the old man begins to elaborate. He states that Denji did good in doing whatever he was told, but the Yakuza were just in it to make money, and that the best way they could do so was to form a contract with the devil just as Denji had. And so they allied with the zombie devil. Just then, Denji is stabbed. The zombie devil shows up and states that he has plans to kill not only him, but every devil hunter. It's showed that the Yakuza were turned into zombies by the devil, and they chase Denji. Denji is stabbed once more, and then brutally killed by the Yakuza. Even Pochita isn't spared, having been severed in two. As Pochita dies, a bit of Denji's blood gets into his mouth, and we have a flashback of the two cutting wood. Denji tells Pochita that if anything ever happens to him, he wants him to take over his body so that he can escape. He tells the devil to take over his body and run in the event of Denji's death, because he doesn't want Pochita to be killed by a devil or a devil hunter, and doesn't want him to inherit his debt either. He tells him that in the case that he can't live a normal life and die a normal death, that he wants Pochita to do it for him. Back in reality, Denji's severed corpse parts begin to be pulled back together as Pochita fuses to his body. Denji, within his mind, awakens to see Pochita there, and Denji says that Pochita is doing it, he's taking over his body. Pochita states, however, that he's making a contract, and that in return for becoming his heart and keeping him alive, Denji needs to show him more of the dreams he loved hearing about. Denji awakens to find that not only is he alive, but his wounds are healed and his body is back in one piece. He then sees the Yakuza coming after him, and he wonders why they would do this just for money. They already have a good life, but sought something better. He concludes that they also must have been chasing their dreams, and that dreams are, in and of themselves, not wrong. But if their dreams got in the way of his dreams, well, elf off. He then pulls the cord on his chest as he's overwhelmed by zombies. The zombie devil states that he must be dead by now, but is mortified when he sees Denji, his head now a chainsaw, his arms possessing chainsaws as well, pushing through. The zombie devil tries to talk Denji down, telling him that he's now just like them. Denji doesn't care though, and he completely eviscerates the devil. He then turns back and sees the rest of the Yakuza zombies coming for him, and he begins to slaughter them as well, all in bliss, knowing that he knows that when he finishes killing them that he will no longer have any debt to pay. The next day, a group of public safety devil hunters show up. They'd been assigned to kill the zombie devil, but instead they find Denji there in his chainsaw form. They are prepared to kill him, but the woman amongst them notes that he isn't a devil, or at least doesn't smell like one. Conversely, he doesn't smell like a human either. Tired from his battle, Denji begins to cough up blood and asks her to simply hold him. Instead, she hugs him. She gives him a simple choice. He can either live like a devil and be killed by her, or live as a human and be taken in as her pet. She further says that if he chooses human, he will be well taken care of. He'll be fed, housed, and get to work as a public safety devil hunter. Denji is intrigued when he learns that he'll get to have breakfast and states that it sounds heavenly. Waking up in the car with her, his stomach rumbles. She also mentions that they missed breakfast and should stop for something to eat. Denji states that he has no money and she tells him not to sweat it, she'll just pay for both. She also offers him her jacket because he thinks it might draw attention if a shirtless guy is running around. Denji realizes that he loves this girl. He doesn't know who she is, but he loves her. When they go to the restaurant, they begin to order their food when suddenly a man comes running in bleeding, begging for help. The girl tells him that she is a devil hunter and can help him. He says that a devil kidnapped his daughter in the parking lot and ran off with her. The girl thinks for a moment before asking Denji his name and telling him to go after it for her so her udon doesn't go cold. Denji says that his will get cold too, but she tells him that he misunderstands. He is still her pet and as a pet, she expects him to say one of the following, woof or yes. He has no option to say no because the girl has no use for a dog that says no when that useless dogs get euthanized. Denji realizes she might not be as nice as he thought and gets a bit pissed off that he is once again being treated as a dog at the expense of his life. Instead of it being the Yakuza though, it's a government organization. He heads out into the woods, ready to kill the devil and save the little girl. It's then that he finds the little girl frolicking with the little worm-like devil, making a daisy crown and laughing with it. Denji is confused. The girl, realizing Denji's there, steps in the way, standing between the worm and the devil, telling him that he can't kill it because it's her friend. She then says that her dad beats her and that he was beating her in the parking lot when the devil came by and saved her. Denji realizes that she's made a friend out of a kind devil, much like he had with Pochita. He offers to run away with them. In doing so, the little girl would never need to deal with her abusive father, Denji wouldn't need to be anyone's dog, and the worm devil would be able to survive. It's then that Denji realizes that he's been tricked. The trap is sprung. Denji is covered by the devil's body. It reveals that it's the muscle devil, and that its ability is to manipulate muscles, as it had done with the little girl, and is now doing with Denji. But unbeknownst to the muscle devil, Denji has a trick up both of his sleeves and his forehead. He pulls the cord, and by merely activating his chainsaw devil powers, he cuts himself free. He proceeds to finish off the devil with relative ease, and then takes the little girl back. The girl is waiting for him, asking if he finished the devil, by which Denji responds with woof. 
He then collapses into her arms once more, saying he lost too much blood after cutting himself with the chainsaws. But it's no secret that his head goes straight into her chest, so... She begins to explain to him what's going on. She tells him that his friend, Pochita, isn't dead, but living inside of him. She further says that his condition is very rare. So rare, in fact, that it's hardly documented, if documented at all, and doesn't even have an official name yet. It's then that Denji's stomach growls once more, and she asks if he has the strength to feed himself. Denji tells her he can't after realizing what it would mean if he couldn't, and so she feeds him. She asks if it's good, and he woofs at her to her amusement. He then asks what type of guy she's into, and she says someone like Denji, which both surprises and overjoys him. He asks her name, and she says that it's Makima. He thinks deeply about the beauty of her name, and then goes to tell her that he likes her too, but is surprised to see that she isn't there. She calls to him from the distance, and shows him the Public Safety Devil Hunters Tokyo Branch Building, and offers him a uniform, telling him he has to wear it when he works there. She then introduces him to Aki Hayakawa. She tells him that they're partners now. Denji states that he doesn't want to work with Aki and would rather work with Makima, but he's dragged away by Aki who states that he's nowhere near her level. But she comforts him by telling him that one day, if he works hard, they may work together. Aki drags Denji down an alleyway and proceeds to beat him brutally, saying that the only reason that Denji has decided to become a devil hunter is because he likes Makima, and that is a shallow reason, and that shallow devil hunters never last long. He then flings his cigarette into Denji's chest and spits on it to put it out. He tells Denji not to come back to work, but Denji kicks him in the balls and says that the only reason why Aki is there is because he likes Makima. He further states that this was the first time he had been fed by another and treated nice. If this is a shallow reason, then he's happy to die if it keeps it this way. Aki fights back, but Denji kicks him in the balls again, causing him to collapse. When they get back to the office, Denji makes the excuse that Aki was attacked by a testicle devil. Aki asks why he has to be partnered with Denji, and Makima says that it's because Aki's team is experimental, and that Denji is one of those rare instances of a person being able to turn into a devil. Aki says that he can't believe it, and that it's only a myth, but Makima and Denji confirm it. From here, Denji begins to live with Aki, who is mortified by how dirty Denji lives, and by how long he takes in the bathroom. It isn't much longer though until Aki gets a call about a fiend at East Nerima residence. When they get there, it's explained to Denji that a fiend is what happens when a devil takes over a dead body and are generally distinguished by their heads. When they discover it, Aki commands him to kill it with his chainsaw powers, but Denji believes that that's going overboard and instead kills it with an axe. Aki tells him that he should not sympathize with devils, even if they're half-human, because they don't have feelings like others do, not like humans. He tells Denji that his entire family was killed before his eyes, but Denji states that if it is even possible for a devil to become his friend, he'll take it, a sentence that Aki states that he will remember. In reality, Denji just didn't want to spray any blood on the Playboy magazines that he had claimed for himself. He now notes that he is now free and can touch all the booba he wants, and that's becoming his dream, to touch Makima's boobas. When he returns, he's informed that he's getting a new partner, something Denji isn't super happy about, but it is revealed that his next partner will herself be a fiend. She comes in, declaring that her name is Power, and demanding that all humans cower before her. Denji is, at first, less than excited, but upon realizing that she also possesses boobas, he quickly gets over it and looks forward to working with her. Denji and Power are patrolling when suddenly Power demands blood and asks him to let her kill something. Denji recalls Makima's talk with them, telling them that their section is called the Fourth Section, and is, of course, experimental. This means that if they do not produce results, they'll get disbanded. And as a half-devil and a fiend, neither Denji nor Power want that. She tells him that if he runs into trouble with any other devil hunters or police, just to show them his badge. They have a hard time finding any devils though, which power attributes to her own fearsomeness. But suddenly she smells blood and jumps from the rooftop, forming a hammer with her blood coming down and smashing the sea cucumber devil. Turns out that this devil was already being engaged by a private citizen devil hunter and that she swooped in and took their prey. Makima explains to them during the cleanup that it is an obstruction of business and that first, Power needs to control herself, and second, when Power doesn't control herself, then she must. Makima suggests that Power's excitable nature means that she isn't cut out to be a devil hunter. This startles Power, who states that it was all Denji's fault and that he told her to go kill it. Denji responds that she's a dirty liar and that he said nothing of the sort. Makima states that she doesn't really care who was at fault and that they should just focus on accomplishing big things. Elsewhere, Denji is too busy thinking of, well, you can guess, and Power is playing with a cat. She states that because she's a devil, she can't get along well with humans, but that she can get along well with cats, a holdover from when she was alive. She states that she once had a cat, a kitty named Nyako, or Miaui. She said that a devil kidnapped her cat, and that she was captured by Makima a little after before she could retrieve it. 
Denji thinks this is stupid, but the moment Power states that she will let him touch her badonkadonks if he manages to save her cat, Denji accepts with vigor, swearing to kill the devil who would dare hurt such a poor innocent kitty. They get time off from the devil hunters and it's revealed that Power can't live by herself and must always be accompanied by a partner. Denji and Power are on their way home when Power mentions that she knows where the devil is who kidnapped her cat. The issue is, the moment she gets close, the devil will use the cat as a shield. She needs Denji to kill it to save the cat. Denji tries to bond with her, mentioning Pochita, the devil he used to keep as a pet, and how it's now part of him as his heart, living inside of him. Power says that living inside of him means it's just dead and is a way to console himself after the loss. Denji wonders if they'll ever get along. Makima meets with the higher-ups in regards to her new team and gives a status report. These heads mention that the other nations are beginning to use the devils for their militaries, and asks how her dog unit is going, which she says is going swimmingly, and even makes mention of Denji's potential. They tell her not to get attached as she is just the dog trainer, not the owner. As she's driven home by Aki, he asks her why she's so interested in Denji, and she says that he is the chainsaw devil. She says that devils are born with a name related to a concept, and the stronger your fear of a concept is, the stronger the devils are. A coffee demon is relatively weak, as our greatest fear would likely be burning our mouths. A car devil is another story. This might be strong because people are naturally afraid of being run over. She then mentions Denji is the chainsaw devil. How scary must that be? To give an idea, we tend to watch horror movies centered around chainsaw murderers. There's even a movie called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And if you're interested in movies with chainsaw fights, there's Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. Terrifying. My question is if there's a devil devil. Denji's walking with power towards a location when suddenly he realizes what's happening. He tries to take her head off with his axe, but she dodges and hammers him in the back of the head. It's revealed that she never intended Denji to defeat the devil, but instead be eaten by it in exchange for the cat. The bat devil is wounded. Its arm is missing due to an attack from humans. It's been hiding ever since and needs blood to regenerate. It takes Denji and drinks his, regenerating its arm. However, it states that Denji tastes like ass and decides that it wants to eat children instead. As recompense for failing to bring a more delicious human, the bat devil refuses to give the cat back, swallows it, and then swallows power. It tries to leave like a bat out of hell to find more prey, but Denji is hanging on. It tries to crush him once more, but Denji manages to pull the cord on his chest. As he does so, he recalls a time that he thought Pochita was lost, fearing that it was eaten by a devil. He recalls that as soon as he found Pochita, he was so relieved that the two fell asleep together on the spot. Denji wonders if that's how power felt. Suddenly, the chainsaws begin to protrude from his forehead and arms, cutting him free from the bat devil. He proceeds to remove one of the bat devil's wings, causing them to fall. As they crash into a home, Denji tells the inhabitants to flee for their lives, which confuses the bat devil. It asks why a devil cares for humans and the two fight. But Denji gets angry, realizing that he's waited so long to touch a boob and still hasn't. He manages to carve the bat devil open, killing it, freeing Power and the cat. Power asks why Denji would save her, and he says that it was simply to grab a coconut. She says it's foolish, but will allow it as promised. Before he can do so, he loses his hand to the new leech devil. The leech devil chastises Denji for killing its boyfriend, the bat devil, but upon inspecting his face, believes that he's cute and decides to spare him, but won't spare Power and the cat. Denji pulls the cord on his chest, but can't transform due to the lack of blood. He tries to fight anyway and is asked why, but he says he won't die until he touches boobs. The leech devil says it's a stupid dream, but Denji's tired of having his dreams ridiculed and called foolish. He decides to bet that his dream means more than leech's dream by putting their dreams on the line in a fight. This fight, Denji loses, but before he can be eaten, he's saved by Aki, who summons his demon fox to devour the leech. Aki arrives with the rest of his team, and his superior, Himeno, tells him to focus on looking out for more devils. Aki picks Denji up, and they begin to head back. Denji wakes up in the hospital, having had his arm reattached. All he really required was a little blood. He tells Denji that he knows power betrayed him, and asks why he sympathizes with her still. He tells him that he uses a fox devil, and that devil hunters fight, having made contracts with devils. He says that he offers parts of his body in exchange for the fox devil's cooperation, and this time it was the skin on his left arm. He says that they could just investigate this, and likely end up killing Denji in power, but that he'll overlook it if Denji agrees to follow his orders. Denji agrees. Later, Power shows up at Aki and Denji's home, noting its cramped feel. Denji and Aki are both confused and alarmed by this. Aki quickly calls Makima, who tells him that she sent Power to live with him since she trusts his strength. From here, Power begins to turn the whole house upside down, refusing to eat vegetables, flush the toilet, or bathe regularly. Denji is angrily cleaning the toilet when suddenly she comes in and offers to make good on the agreement and let him touch her chest. The next part, well... I'm just not gonna mention it. Also, later while doing paperwork with Makima, she convinces him to fight the gun devil. 
She also helps him overcome his disappointment over achieving his dreams, which were subpar in experience. But we're skipping over most of that because I still like to think we're wholesome here on the Amagi. She tells him about the Gun Devil, saying that it appeared in none other than the United States of America and has been a prize to hunt for a long time. And my soul, I want to just scream America every time I see this devil. Bang, 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 pull my devil trigger intensifies. She tells Denji that if he kills this devil, she will grant him one wish that he desires. Denji can't understand how she would just offer him a blank check, but she states that the gun devil is a powerful devil that originated in the US after a horrible attack and hit Japan years earlier, along with other places in the world, managing to kill 1.2 million people worldwide, hitting America, Japan, China, and other parts of the world in a span of about five minutes. Then the devil fell off the face of the earth and has not been seen since. Due to this devil, all firearms worldwide have been banned, and due to the new climate of fear, all devils get a little power boost. She tells Denji that during the attack, the gun devil left behind parts of itself due to the friction of the speed in which it had been moving, and that if any devil devours these pieces, they get stronger. But beyond that, if you get them to touch, they stick together. They believe that if you put enough together, they might be able to locate the gun devil, and as such, they're getting together as much as they possibly can in hopes of finding it. Denji joins Aki's team as they begin to hunt a devil who they believe may have devoured a piece of the gun devil. Denji and Power are bickering with and about each other and just causing a scene. Aki manages to buy their silence with chewing gum. Himeno further cements the deal by stating that whoever kills the devil in their current mission will get a kiss from her. At first, Denji is uninterested because he's already decided who his first kiss will be. However, Himeno mentions that it won't just be any kiss, but a French kiss, which immediately draws his attention. As they search for the devil, Himeno senses a presence. What comes out is pretty much just the Shusuke meme. As it jumps, Himeno uses her ghost devil ability, which she had given her right eye for, to stop it, and power cuts it in two. But it wasn't the devil they were after though, and so they continue through the building. As they move though, they come to the realization that no matter how many times they go up the stairs or down, they never leave the 8th floor. They begin to hypothesize what it means, and Denji suspects that they're stuck there because they killed the devil earlier. However, Aki states that that would be impossible because a devil's powers disappear when they die. Aki further notes that the clocks are all stopped at 8.18, meaning that the entire floor has stopped in time. Everyone handles this news their own way. Denji handles it with happiness, realizing that there are no time constraints now and proceeds to nap. Aki continues to search for resources, Arai is hiding under the covers, and Kobeni was forcefully sedated after she tried to drink toilet water. Power may have become unhinged, but then again, she's always unhinged. Nobel Prize when? Himeno awakes Denji to inform him of the situation, as he seems to be one of the few who aren't actively having a mental breakdown, and proceeds to tell him that they have plenty of water, but that food is running short. Himeno shows that she's holding together well because she has her cigarettes. When Denji mentions it, she reveals that she was the one who got Aki addicted. It's revealed to be a symbol of their friendship. When Aki comes back, he asks if she has any more, but she doesn't, so they share the last one, which Denji points out is an indirect kiss. He's scornfully told to shut up. Aki reveals that he discovered the devil responsible for trapping them there. The devil, which was originally just a head and feet, is now a head with other heads and other feet attached together, becoming a massive wall of human flesh. No matter what, they can't fight it. Aki can't summon his fox devil, and Himeno's ghost devil can't connect either due to the fleshy devil's regeneration. It continues to grow and tells him that there is no escape because its weakness is not on this floor and that they're already in what might be called its stomach. However, it does offer them a contract. If they feed him Denji, it will let them go. Kobeni immediately tries to take Denji with a knife, but everyone else subdues her. Arai also votes Denji off the island, and Power does too. Himeno informs Power that, well, a devil's contracts are absolute, and failure on the part of the devil to honor their end of the deal will result in death, that other devils and fiends are exempt from the contract, meaning that even if they feed Denji to it, Power could still be eaten. Power seems disinterested and begins to ask if Denji would like to wrestle. It's also revealed that Power has eaten all of their food. Aki asks if they should just use the sword, but Himeno shoots him down. They continue to debate, and Kobeni, wielding a knife, continues to lose her sanity, stating that maybe it is power keeping them there, and when Arai tries to talk her down, she threatens him too. Kobeni is adamant in feeding Denji to the Eternity Devil, but she's stopped from stabbing anyone else when Aki throws himself in front of the blade. Himeno, witnessing this, finally begins to break down herself, realizing the truth. She has been told that all of her partners had been killed because they were too normal, and that devils truly feared the hunters with a few screws loose. She laments that Aki is too normal, and that his single minded desire to kill the gun devil will result in his eventual death. Before this can continue though, Denji decides that he will kill the Eternity Devil by feeding himself to it, and if he fails, at least the contract will be observed. So he pulls his cord and jumps into the Eternity Devil's mouth. He cuts it to pieces, saying that he'll continue to fight and hurt it until it begs for death. 
After a little while, and being injured and nearly dying a few times, he realizes that he can feed on the Eternity Devil's blood to regenerate. So, feeding on the Devil, he can indefinitely cut it. Three days pass, in which they are at a painful stalemate. The Eternity Devil, at the end of its rope, begs him to kill it by exposing its core. He obliges by severing it in two. They're then free to leave the hotel. After this, they all decide to go out drinking. Not just because they wish to welcome the new recruits, but also because they want to apologize for trying to kill Denji. While there, Denji is revealed to be illiterate due to the fact that he hasn't had time to learn. Himeno, then finally drunk, decides to honor her promise of kissing Denji, though it's also revealed that she'll kiss just about anyone if she's drunk enough. Then Makima shows up, and Denji is caught between kissing Himeno or kissing Makima. To avoid the decision, he changes the subject to how he found a piece of the gun devil. Aki mentions that it's been happening more frequently, and also states that he doesn't understand what the Eternity Devil's fascination was with Denji. They ask Makima for answers, but she only agrees to tell them if they can drink her under the table. Spoilers, they don't. Himeno decides to give Denji that French kiss she promised, and Denji seems to enjoy it until he and everyone else realize she puked in his mouth and Denji accidentally swallows it. That was not a fun bathroom trip. First boob touch was flat, first kiss was puke. I can't help but remember Meryl Hess from Signs and wonder why Denji couldn't get that same miracle. After this, Denji and Himeno end up back at her apartment. However, she continues advances towards him. He mentions he's afraid that every kiss from now on will taste like puke, but she says that he'll learn other tastes. Basically, you'll get over it. From here though, her advances get a little more explicit, and while compared to other anime, this is considered tame-ish, we're still your friendly neighborhood wholesome-ish channel, so we'll spare your innocent minds from this scene. Just suffice it to say, he says no, and she complies. He's saving herself for Makima anyway. Still weird though, because he's only 16, a fact Himeno alludes to as a reason to be grateful that he told her no. However, over breakfast, she calls Denji a friend, and says that he and Power are both free to visit whenever they want. Elsewhere, Makima and another agent are on a bullet train 30 minutes outside of Kyoto, when suddenly they're attacked by many armed individuals known only at the moment as C-Team. Aki, Himeno, Power, and Denji are at a ramen shop, unknowing that their other drinking mates are being targeted. Besides Makima, many other devil hunters are being shot. It's then that a man in the ramen shop insults the soup, which heavily offends Denji and Power. Nonetheless, the man continues. Aki senses that something is wrong. Suddenly, the man informs Denji that he is the grandson of the old man who had fallen under the control of the zombie devil and blames Denji for it. He pulls a gun and begins to shoot. He shoots Himeno in the chest and Denji in the head before power disarms him, and Aki's fox devil devours him. The man is fine though as he's revealed to be a devil-human hybrid just like Denji and that his contract is with the katana devil. The katana man attacks them, but he's met by Aki who's using his sword. However, the sword is shaped less like a sword and more like a nail. An invisible finger flicks the nail through the devil three times as a disembodied mouth counts down from three to one. Then, the Cursed Devil's ability activates, nearly destroying the Katana Man. However, he is revived by another person who asks why he was defeated. Katana Man mentions that he let down his guard. He then cuts Aki, but it isn't fatal. In an attempt to save Aki, Himeno proceeds to use her Ghost Devil, but it's too afraid to attack. Only after offering her life in contract does the Ghost Devil agree. It manages to protect Aki, but is consumed by the Snake Devil, and Himeno is left as nothing but a pile of clothes. However, the last remnants of the Ghost Devil pulls Denji's cord and awakens him. Denji engages with the Katana Man and his various henchmen, but is cut in half. They try to take Denji, however, it's revealed that Makima is somehow still alive. She mysteriously manages to kill all those who attempted to hurt her. She then meets two agents and demands 30 condemned prisoners as well as a high vantage place. Everyone but Makima are blindfolded. She demands that each prisoner say a name, and as they do, when she rubs her hands together, the person is suddenly smashed. The katana man is told to move by Denji, but as he does so, he sees Kobeni wielding a knife coming in their direction. Sawatari commands the snake devil to attack her, but she easily dodges. It's revealed that she and Arai had been attacked by gun agents and that Arai sacrificed himself to save her. Kobeni manages to cut off the katana man's hand as he tries to shoot her and then shoots him in the back. She then uses Denji to protect herself from being shot. Sawatari then grabs the katana man and shoves him into a van, deciding to cut their losses and escape. Kobeni apologizes to the unconscious Denji for her actions. Makima is later greeted by another agent who passes a message to her. Most of divisions 1 through 4 were killed and whoever was left had been assigned to Makima. The man asks her how much she anticipated which she says she's not at liberty to say. The man then quits to save his own life. As Aki awakens, he sees Power and Denji sitting by his bedside reading manga and eating apples. Aki asks who all is left, and Denji says that currently the only members of Division 4 are himself and Kobeni. Denji leaves but forgets his manga and goes back to get it. He then notices that Aki is crying, but he himself can't be brought to tears. 
He tries, but fails. Even thinking of Pochita's death does nothing. He wonders if he would cry over Makima's death and believes that he wouldn't and begins to wonder if he even has a human heart left over. He's then taken to meet Makima who introduces heat and power to Kishibe, her mentor, who is defined as the best devil hunter in the entirety of the devil hunters as part of Special Division 1. He starts out by asking them three questions. Do you feel bad when people die? Do they seek revenge? And do they side with humans or devils? Both state that they don't really feel anything, they don't care about revenge, Revenge, and they'll side with whatever side offers them a better deal. Kishibe tells them that they scored perfectly and then breaks their necks. He tells them that their bodies are physically the same as humans but that their regeneration is through the roof. He helps them recover and tells them that their training begins now. They won't be ready until they can beat him. He also mentions on a personal note that he had always hoped ever since he was a child that someday he would have a toy that wouldn't break. Now he has it, as Denji is immortal and power is semi-immortal. They begin to train, and Kishibe does not hold back. Elsewhere, Aki, having been informed by the Cursed Devil that he only has two years to live as recompense for using his power, is trying to contact the Fox Devil, which is stated by other Devil Hunters to likely be pissed at him and never to respond again after having been killed. He then says he needs to get a contract with an even stronger devil, but further states he could also just quit and live a peaceful life. But, like, he'd be throwing away his reason for living, and he's only got two years, so what do you think he'll say? An unseen woman then walks in. Denji and Power, on the other hand, have been fighting Kishibe where they each have been defeated over 20 times. Power suggests that they do the smart thing instead of relying solely upon brute force. Denji and Power both pat themselves on the back for the good idea. They set up an elaborate trap for Kishibe. Power sets up bottles of blood above along with Denji while she stays behind the door. It's a three-pronged attack. She throws a spear through the door as he goes to knock. Just in case he avoids this, which he does, Denji is to come down from the floor above to catch him by surprise which ends terribly. In concept, it was good, and he commends them, but to set up the trap cost Power too much blood, which nerfed her a bit, and Denji isn't the best at sneaking. He says they're done for the day, but as he's walking away, he throws a knife at Denji, telling him that Prey should never trust what the hunter says. Elsewhere, Aki makes a contract with the future devil, a devil which only makes a deal with him on the terms that he gets to live in his right eye. The reason? Aki will die a horrible death, and the future devil wants to see it with his own eyes. Denji and Power are once more defeated by Kishibe, who is pleased with their progress to this point, and tells them that their training needs to only be weekly now instead of daily, and that they need to quickly distinguish themselves by bringing in Sawatari and Katana Man, elsewise Division 4 will be shut down, and Kishibe will have to kill them. Elsewhere, Makima meets up with the head of the Yakuza family and demands the names of all those involved with the attack. He refuses, saying that it would cause an all-out war between rival gangs, and that foreign gangs will infiltrate Japan. Nonetheless, when she shows him a bag full of his comrade's eyes, she says that she will return them if he gives the list. She's attacked by an angry Yakuza member, but before he can even touch her, he falls over, bleeding from every orifice. Meanwhile, Sawatari and Katana Man are walking through a building, discussing their next plans, having an army of zombies under their control. It's then that Kishibe and a large party of devil hunters plan to raid the building. Inside, Shark Fiend, Violence Fiend, Spider Devil, and Angel Devil. Aki is there as well. Once these zombies are dealt with, they also deal with some gunmen, and Aki comes in contact with Sawatari. Sawatari's snake devil spits out the ghost devil, which is now under contract with Sawatari. He's overwhelmed by it, but receives a cigarette from one of its many hands, a hand that used to be Himeno's. It says easy revenge on it. Remembering that the ghost devil is blind and only senses through fear, he easily climbs atop and kills it. Before Sawatari can kill him with the snake devil though, Kobeni comes up behind her and corners her with a knife. She doesn't kill her though under Aki's request. Meanwhile, Power and Denji are ascending in an elevator when it stops at unsuspecting zombies. Denji requests that they remain quiet, but Power shouts out in challenge to the zombie horde and engages it in battle, expecting Denji to follow. Instead, he just closes the doors and ascends to the top floor. When the door opens, Katana Man is waiting for him. After a short conversation about killing his grandfather, as well as whether killing zombies constitutes killing humans, they engage in battle. They land on a train after jumping from the building. The train declares an emergency stop and begins to slow down as the panicked passengers start to flee, all but a single injured woman who Denji protects at the cost of his arm. Once he loses his other arm in the battle, Katana Man believes he's won, and demands Denji apologize for killing his grandfather, but he didn't suspect that he had already lost. Lost. Denji had already severed Katana Man in two the long way. When we next see them, they're both pretty close to naked, with Katana Man tied to the train by chainsaw blades. Denji said he was saving him for the police, but is now starting to think that imprisonment is too good for him. 
due to how he killed Himeno. Denji says they'll have a little competition. Denji and Aki will kick the katana man in the tenders over and over again until the police arrive, trying to see who can get the loudest scream out of him. Aki says it isn't what Himeno would want, but upon looking at the cigarette that said Easy Revenge on it, he smiles and stands, asking what the winner gets as a prize, and Denji says whatever's left of said tenders after the competition. Later on, Makima reports to the higher-ups about the events of the day and it's revealed that the snake devil had killed her, likely as a part of the contract to keep her silent. We then see that Denji has a reoccurring dream in which he's standing in front of a door with an eye gazing at him and the eye speaks with the voice of Pochita. Denji is happy but the chainsaw devil tells him to never ever open the door. This frightens him. Later though, realizing that Denji's in a bad mood, Makima takes him on a date, the date being a movie marathon at the local cinema. They view many movies together, but as Denji watches them, he sees the audience laughing and crying with it, but he and Makima do not. Then he and she are watching a movie, and during what one might consider to be a trivial scene, he begins to cry. He looks over to see that Makima is as well. When he asks her if she thinks he has a heart, she listens to his chest for a beat and says that he does. She then leaves him alone to blush. After the date, Denji is all sunshine and rainbows. He's enjoying his newfound heart and goes so far as to donate money to charity and receives a flower in return, a flower that he proceeds to eat. As he walks, it begins to rain and so he takes cover in a phone booth where he's quickly met by a girl. He coughs up the flower and gives it to her, so she offers for him to come to her work, which is a coffee shop. She would go to work later and find that Denji is already waiting for her. She sits down with him and orders some coffee and introduces herself as Reze. Denji realizes that he likes this girl and begins to have conflicting thoughts over his feelings for Makima. Elsewhere, where Aki and the Angel Devil are breaking their necks to find devils so they can be put into the Gun Devil Task Force. And by breaking their necks, I mean Aki is breaking his neck and Angel is just eating ice cream. It's revealed that Angel Devil is the strongest hunter besides Kishibe and that his ability is to absorb the lifespan of others and form weapons. When he was first discovered, he absorbed all the people within the village where he was born. Aki and Angel manage to find a devil and kill it. They find a dying civilian within it and Aki asks Angel to kill them, but Angel denies and Aki has to do it himself, causing him to doubt if they'll ever be able to get along. Reze and Denji continue to meet, with Denji eating there every day. Denji reveals that he has no ability to read beside the kanji for balls. She convinces him to attend night school with her. Elsewhere, a man looks into a sink and speaks with the Typhoon Devil, who informs him that its powers will be his if he can deliver him to the heart of Denji. Reze begins to take Denji to school during the night and comments that it's creepy at night and has her a little scared. She holds Denji's hand, all while Denji feels as if he's cheating on Makima. She begins to teach him simple stuff and asks if being a devil hunter is really good for him. He says that he gets a bed and three square meals, but she informs him that this is bare minimum. After that, they go swimming. Denji doesn't know how to swim though, and so Reze teaches him. I certainly hope that they censor this scene in the anime. After this, we get a split scene where both Angel and Reze ask their partner the same question. Would you rather be a country mouse or a city mouse? It's explained that a city mouse lives a safe life, though it's more boring, and that a country mouse lives a more dangerous but happier life. Angel answers this question himself, and Denji answers it too. Angel would rather be a country mouse, but was captured by Makima and brought to the city, forced to live as a city mouse. Denji states he would rather live as a city mouse, and he doesn't require much to be happy. He simply wants to live a normal life. Reze tells Denji that he should join her for the food festival the following day and proceeds to leave him to go to the bathroom, only to be met by the scarred man who had talked to the typhoon devil. The scarred man leads her to the roof where he proceeds to speak of how he will torture her just to get to Denji. However, she turns on him and kills him, also revealing herself to be fluent in Russian. The typhoon devil apologizes to her and proceeds to remove the body at her request. She then returns to Denji. The next day, they enjoy the festival where she asks him to run away with her, but he says he likes his job. They then share their first kiss, but wouldn't you know it, he gets his tongue bit off by her. She then cuts off his hand and says she'll take his heart, but it is then that Beam, the shark fiend, shows up and rescues Denji. They escape, and it's revealed that Reze is herself a hybrid much like Denji and the Katana Man. She is the bomb girl, and her ability lets her explode. Her head turns into a bomb, as does one of her arms, and she rushes after them. Beam attempts to defend Denji, but is blown up, left wounded and on the ground. Suddenly, Reze is confronted with devil hunters, but kills them with the snap of her fingers. She then turns back to see that Denji and Beam are gone. Beam rushes off to the 2nd Division training facility where Aki and Angel are, and begs for help, saying that Bomb Girl is coming and that she works for the Gun Devil. Aki asks how Beam knows this, and he reveals that Makima told him not to tell under the threat of death. It's then that Reze shows up in her human form. But when they refuse to let her in, she invades the facility as the Bomb Devil. While inside, she begins to slaughter all of those within as Aki and Angel escape with Denji and Beam. Their lead does not last long though, as Reze catches up easily. 
She says that she would rather not kill anyone else, but Aki goes around her and commands Angel to give him blood. She's then held off by the violence fiend and Kobeni, but Kobeni gets scared and begs for mercy, and Reze grants it to her. Eventually though, she catches up to Aki. Aki commands Denji to stay back and let them defend him, but Denji's chainsaws tear through the roof and he pulls himself out, mentioning that every girl he has ever loved has tried to kill him. The two begin to face off on the freeway. Eventually, he's knocked back into a building. They continue to fight, but her reflexes and speed are out of this world. She knocks him into the sky with the blast. She then turns her leg into a missile and knocks him into the ground and pretty much finishes him off, leaving him just a head and smoldering torso. She steps over the wounded and dead with her prize, but Aki, who is hiding amongst the others, jumps up and slices off her hand and begins to fight her using the future devil, which grants him reaction time in the negatives. She would kick the ground and cause a massive explosion. Aki is saved by the violence fiend who apologizes for being tardy. They're then ready to fight Bomb Girl, but she calls a timeout, stating that she's lost too much blood and a 2 versus 1 would be unfair. Turns out this was a ploy as the Typhoon Devil comes out to fight as well. Angel Devil is giving Denji blood over yonder and Beam tells him to think outside the box by using his chainsaw's chains to catch onto things and increase his speed. Sadly, against what Beam assumed he would do, he forces Beam to become a shark and rides him into battle like a horse. Now tell me one 12 year old who didn't want this as a poster in their room. Denji manages to defeat the Typhoon Devil and makes his way to fight the Bomb Devil. She puts Beam out of the fight fairly quickly, but the fight takes a turn when Denji covers her in chainsaw chains and pulls her into the sea, keeping her from detonating. However, he spares her and tries to convince her to run away with him anyway. She informs him that everything she said was a lie and then breaks his neck, but she doesn't steal his heart, so... He tells her that if she changes her mind and then decides she wants to run away with him, then she should meet him at the cafe. It's then revealed to Aki that the USSR has been running tests on children and that Reze was one of these children. Reze attempts to run away by train, but she stops when she remembers Denji. She goes back to the cafe to join him, but is stopped by rats that form a pillar from which Makima appears. Reze attempts to turn into the bomb devil, but has her arms severed and is then run through by the angel devil's spear. Denji waits all night for her until the shop is set to close, with the keep telling him just to be patient and that the girl of his dreams would walk through those doors at any time. Suddenly, Power walks in and assumes that the flowers are for her. Denji proceeds to eat them instead. After this, a heartbroken Denji once more has a dream about Pochita, standing before that same door, being begged by the little chainsaw devil to never ever open it. He wakes up later and is confronted by Power during breakfast due to her annoyance that Nyako, or Miaoi, has taken a liking to Denji. It's then that Makima shows up and informs him that he, Power, and Aki will all go on a paid vacation with her. Denji Denji is excited, but Power looks for a way out of it. It isn't long after, though, that the Devil Hunters come into the room and Denji is informed of the truth. After his battle with the Bomb Girl, he has become more high profile. Aki recalls how the Angel Devil told him that devils who are killed on Earth resurrect in Hell, and if killed in Hell, they re-resurrect on Earth, but without any memories, save one. The sound of a chainsaw. Seems Aki is putting pieces together. Makima informs Denji and Power that they're going into a protection program after Denji's battle couldn't be censored. It's revealed that every major nation is getting together assassination teams hell-bent on taking Denji. A group of men in the United States who survived the Gun Devil's attack claim that they're immortal and will take the Chainsaw Devil and earn $2 million. A hunter in the snow and his master make the decision to go after Denji to secure the master's retirement. A woman hosting a harem of fiends decides to take the job if her devil joy toys get the chance to have basic human rights and attain a higher education. Even Santa Claus is in on this hunt, for real. Well, an agent from Germany, codenamed Santa Claus. And it seems that Santa Claus is the man in the park being contacted by the German higher-ups. He asks only for four children to adopt, three for use in devil contracts, and one just for himself. Denji himself is now in his room moping. He wonders why everyone wants his heart, and further, he's upset because his vacation was cancelled. Aki comes in, sits on top of Denji, and tells him that it isn't cancelled, just postponed until the threat has passed. Denji wonders if he can just kill all the assassins and finally go on his vacation. After this, Denji and Power are eating lunch and watching the ducks when he drops his food and attempts to eat it when a group of devil hunters assigned to watch him tells him that it's stupid. The hunters assigned to him are Kusakabe, Yoshida, and Tamaoki. Besides them, he also has Aki and Angel. Kusakabe tells him to give him the dirty rice ball and that he'll throw it away. But Denji's having none of that and gobbles it down in spite of their warning. Makima had assigned them alongside another trio of agents to be his protection. The other agents are Kurose, Tendo, and Subaru. Unfortunately for them though, the immortal agents from the US throw out road spikes causing them to crash. Before the trio can recover, the agents shoot them dead and disguise themselves as the Japanese devil hunters. Denji and crew are at a burger joint where Power has ripped all the vegetables off her burger and asked Denji to eat them. After Kusakabe tells her that they're good for her, Power suddenly has them pushed into her mouth by Denji, which triggers gag reflexes and pisses her off enough to storm out of the restaurant. It's then revealed that the woman who has been the master of the man in the snowy forest has stabbed Denji three times with a nail and evoked the cursed devil's power. She tells her apprentice that he only needs to stab him once more to trigger the curse. She then admires the experience of the burger. Outside, Kobeni and Violence Fiend are enjoying ice cream. 
It's then that the American shows up using the face of Kurose. He shows up and claims that Subaru and Tendo were killed. Suddenly, the American is struck by Kobeni's car, which Power strong-armed her into driving. Kobeni is mortified as Power says it's Kobeni's fault since it is Kobeni's car. However, the truth of what the American truly was comes out, and Power declares that she knew the entire time. Yoshida then manages to kill one of the two remaining Americans, Joey, leaving Aldo alone, who he believes is an innocent civilian due to his unprofessional vomiting over the death of their older brother. Elsewhere, the Chinese agent and her group of fiend friends show up in Tokyo and go to a sushi restaurant. Half of them are eating ceramic plates, but Quan Shi declares that she will hunt Denji. Aldo, on the other hand, the last remaining American brother, takes the face of Subaru to get close to Tomono, a former friend of Subaru. While there, he begins to ask for information on Tomono and even Subaru's life. Upon doing so, Aldo is stricken with guilt over having killed the man and breaks down into tears. However, Tomono brushes it off as him possibly being drunk. The next day, the German man begins to form puppets out of everyone he touches. With that, the old man, Quan Shi, and Aldo all mobilize, preparing to capture Denji. The German man assaults the group with his doll puppets. It's then revealed that the German man is using the doll devil's powers, but thankfully it seems that fiends are immune to its power, which is the power to turn anything it touches into a doll. As Denji power and the hunters flee through the building, Quan Shi and her harem appear to snatch victory right out from under Santa Claus, killing Hunter and Doll alike before engaging Denji's team. Kishibe to the rescue. Kishibe takes control of two members of Quan Shi's harem and demands her surrender for their lives. It's revealed that the two, Kishibe and Quan Shi, are past acquaintances. Kishibe attempts to get Quan Shi to join him as he plans to kill Makima, but she refuses, planning to stay out of it. Her harem frees themselves, and in a moment, Kishibe and Quan Shi are attacking each other. Quan Chi manages to throw him out of the window, though he survives by sliding down the building and landing on the roof of Kobeni's car as she watches in horror. That is why you have insurance, kids. Aldo, who appeared to shoot at Denji, is also tossed out, but he just lands on the roof of the car instead of sliding down the building. As Denji and Beam run, Denji steps on a nail left by the woman and her apprentice, as Denji is picked up and ripped apart by the Cursed Devil. However, as the apprentice grows closer, the woman turns him into a doll, revealing that the old German man was just a doll himself and that she was the real Santa Claus. Elsewhere, Quan Shi throws Yoshida out the window, which he stops when he summons the octopus devil's tentacles, which he calls the Eight Tails. Now, just for a moment, can we admire the Naruto reference here? Aki and various other hunters have a contract with the Fox Devil, a devil whose eyes remind me of the Rinnegan, and now the octopus devil's arms are called the Eight Tails. Fantastic. Anyway, Aki sees a vision of the future in which Miss Santa Claus sacrifices the old man and three children to the Hell Devil, granting her the ability to send anyone in the building to Hell. Quan Chi calls a truce between all parties as they awaken in Hell. Quan Chi asks her fiend friend, Ping Shi, if there is a way out, and she is terrified as she realizes that they're being watched by devils far stronger than the gun devil ever thought about being, devils who have never once been killed, the primal fears. Suddenly, one of the doors in the sky opens up and the primal fear known as the Darkness Devil appears. He absolutely obliterates everyone, killing almost everyone there save our main characters. Sadly, the death toll counts beam and I'm slightly in tears. A moment of silence for the best shark boy. Due to the Spider Fiend's intervention, Makima appears in Hell to challenge the Darkness Devil. They both point at each other and suddenly Makima's finger shatters and the Darkness Devil begins to bleed from the mouths and eyes of the various faces on its body. She is then stabbed as she revives one of her adversaries who offers his entire body to the Hell Devil if they will transport them out of Hell. As they return, Santa Claus, having taken in all of her dolls, transforms into a massive puppet monstrosity. She goes about to kill Makima, but Makima gives Denji some blood and revives him. As the Chainsaw Man, he attacks Santa, but she blasts him through the floor. Dolls begin to swarm Denji. Quan Chi's head is being held by one of her harem members who laments the death of so many of her friends. She then pulls a strange knife from the empty eye socket of Quan Chi's skull and drops the head into the swarm reviving her and revealing her to be a hybrid like Denji. Denji continues to face off against the dolls when suddenly Santa returns some of the dolls' consciousness back when he's still controlling them. Due to this, Denji hesitates. He does not want to kill living humans, but Quan Chi saves him before he is killed by saying that it isn't true and that they're merely mimicking it. Denji asks how she knows and Quan Chi says that she doesn't, but also ignorance is bliss. And as night begins to fall, Denji continues his battle with the demonic Santa who has just evolved Pokemon style due to the fall of night. Santa's regeneration is off the charts though, so Denji sets himself on fire with gasoline and tries again. Santa finds her regeneration slowing down with the light of the fire, but it's not enough for Denji to kill her. He's swarmed by another group of dolls, but is freed when a car crashes into him and explodes, bursting into flames. Denji then takes the car and smashes Santa with it. As Santa burns, Cosmo Fiend, one of Quan Chi's harem, uses her ability on Santa. And as if the Naruto references weren't enough, we now get a 
Dragon Ball reference as she starts charging her Halloween attack like a Kamehameha. With her ability, she traps Santa in a semi-conscious state where all of the information in existence passes into her brain, resulting in her only being able to comprehend the word Halloween. Across the world, her army of dolls also breaks into the phrase, including Aldo, who must have become a doll at some point. Suddenly, Quan Chi and her harem take Denji's head, but before she can escape, Makima shows up. Quan Chi and fiends immediately surrender, offering body parts should she allow them to go free, but instead, Makima beheads them. The battle ends, but it doesn't really end, as though the fighting is over, the trauma remains. And by trauma, I mean power most specifically. She's so terrified of the darkness devil that she refuses to do anything by herself, including bathe, eat, or sleep, asking Denji to constantly check places for the darkness devil, including the inside of her mouth. Power and Denji get sort of a little naughty, I guess, but Denji notes it feels empty. Don't mind me, I'm a big fan of the Poundji ship. Power seems a little guilty because her terror has caused Denji to miss a vacation with Makima. Instead, though, they go with Aki to Hokkaido to visit the graves of his family. He notes normally how he's miserable from the trip he makes every year, but instead he was distracted by Denji and Power, to which he's grateful. Returning home, Kishibe, who has been tasked with watching Power's cat, returns it to Aki. Aki then makes the unexpected step of asking to have his team taken off the mission to locate the gun devil. He states he got cold feet, and the reason why is that he remembered seeing the way that Denji and Power both got warped up due to the battle in Hell. Returning home, Aki is treated to a meal by both Denji and Power, one that makes him puke. Later, as they all prepare for sleep, Power seems to have gotten over her fear of the Darkness Devil by convincing her that she was the one who defeated it. After this, Aki, Denji, and Power are summoned by Makima to discuss this decision to step off the Gun Devil mission. Aki says they did, and Makima states that they aren't going to. Denji and Power are needed, though if Aki wants off, he's free to go. Having lost every reason to quit, he continues with the mission. It's then stated that shortly after the Gun Devil's attack, it was actually found dead and that its corpse is in custody. Aki asks about the guns that everyone else had, and Makima states that those were manufactured by man and that they're using the fear of guns to make the the pieces of the gun devil grow stronger, which in turn causes the parts of it to grow stronger, increasing the power that they grant. Makima states that even though there is a global ban on guns, all nations still manufacture them in secret and sell them on the black market, and that if they do this, that it might be a form of war against the other superpowers who are capitalizing off the fear of guns. Aki elsewhere speaks of it, stating that his mission to kill it is now unable to be accomplished as it is already dead and somewhat immortal as the various nations are using it as a way to cause fear to empower them. He says that it's sad because instead of killing it, Aki will unintentionally be making it immortal. Denji says that this can't be true though, as Makima promised him a witch, so if it was truly immortal, then why would she ask him to kill it? Aki then has a vision of the future, and that night asks about it, in which the future devil tells him that it's an unavoidable future, and that Aki and Power will be killed by Denji. Aki tells Angel, and Angel mentions that he has dreams sometimes of the people that he killed. They both go to Makima, and Aki asks her to please let Power and Denji off the mission, stating that he will do anything and make any contract with any devil if they can go free. Makima asks if he'll make a deal with her, and then commands him to. Angel then remembers he was on the same beach where the village he eradicated was. He realized that he didn't want to kill them, but Makima forced him to by command. He uses 10 years of his life to form a sword to kill her, but she denies this by commanding him to drop it, which he does. It's revealed that the mission to retrieve the gun devil's corpse was a ruse to fulfill her own motives. Back in the United States, the freaking president of the United States is speaking on the phone, mentioning the threat that Makima has become. He then states he wishes to make a contract with the Gun Devil and that he will offer one year from the lifespan of all people on the American continent to the Gun Devil in exchange for the death of Makima. At the same time, Makima enters a church alongside Aki and Angel. She utters the words, come to the Gun Devil, which it does. It rushes to her location at breakneck speeds and begins killing people as it makes its way towards her. She stands there with the others she's made contracts with chained to her. She's shot in the head and killed, but she basically resurrects before she even hits the ground and then summons a group of monstrous devils to attack the Gun Devil, essentially killing it. It then possesses the body of Aki and makes its way toward Aki's apartment as the gun fiend. Makima calls Denji and tells him, ordering him to fight it. Power runs at his orders and then he answers the door, coming face to face with it. Aki fires at Denji. In his own mind, he sees a fantasy where he is with Power and Denji having a snowball fight, but in reality, it is an actual fight. Denji begs Aki to turn back and stop, but Aki doesn't. Aki leaves the arena with multiple blasts, but the people of the neighborhood who saw Denji offer him blood to help him heal begging the one they had seen on TV. With no other choice, Denji gets serious. Aki, seeing Denji crying frantically in his fantasy, decides to give up and declares that he loses and falls over. In reality, Denji has killed him. The future devil declares that Aki has died in the worst possible way, for the Chainsaw Man. At the end of the Gun Devil arc, Denji and Power, taking money from Aki's will, rent a smaller apartment and spend the rest on food and video games. But all is not well. Denji still feels sorrow over having killed Aki. When eating a popsicle on a beach, possibly referencing Naruto after Jiraiya's death, I mean, I don't know, I'm seeing references everywhere now, he notes that the stick says winner. As he notes the words winner, he thinks back on his battle with Aki and notes that he was the winner of that with the words, I killed Aki. That causes him to puke, but you know, I can't help but wonder what sort of raffle he won. 
Denji finally getting some good luck and it's tainted by the fact that he murdered his brother. Denji lays there and suddenly Makima comes over, noting he was upset, and invites him to her house for some tea. He goes in and notes that she has a lot of dogs. While there, she said that she would grant Denji any one wish of his desire if he defeated the gun devil, and now he has. Denji, remembering that Aki has died and that all of his choices have led him to nothing but pain, asks her to treat him like one of her dogs and make every choice for him so he can avoid responsibility. Makima grants it and tests her control over him by making him do dog tricks. Suddenly, there's a knock at the door and Makima states that she called power over. When Denji asks why, Makima states that it is so she would kill her. Denji thinks it's a joke and notes that power will be waiting on the other side with a cake. Why? Because it just so happens to be Denji's birthday tomorrow. Despite hearing Pochita tell him not to open the door, he opens the door to see power holding a cake. Suddenly, Makima holds out her finger and obliterates power's entire torso. Man alive, I really, really want Denji to kill this horrible witch. From the very start, I thought she was creepy, and now she's done gone and killed best girl power. Going back inside, Makima laughs maniacally and then commands Denji to remove his shirt. She then lays down on his lap and explains to him what was behind the door that Pochita told him to never open. In reality, Denji had murdered his abusive alcoholic father. The suicide rap was only cooked up by the Yakuza. Denji had repressed this memory because he truly wanted a normal life, but felt unworthy of it, just as he did now with the deaths of Power and Aki. The next day starts off normally, with Denji sleeping on Makima's couch. She leads him out to show him that there's a group of fiends and devils waiting for him there. She tells him that these were all at one time followers of the Chainsaw Devil, but suddenly the building blows up, and it's revealed that the Devil Hunters have formed an assassination squad hell-bent on killing Makima. The squad is led by Kishibe. They gun her down, as many members of the squad kill themselves to fulfill the contract with the Hell Devil, demanding that it send her there. But she revives and commands Denji to fight for her. He transforms into his Chainsaw Devil form, but this form is far different from before, possessing full body armor and full or arms. He goes up and slaughters the Hell Devil with relative ease. One of the squad members gives it blood to revive it, allowing it to drag Denji to hell. Kishibe then confronts Makima, gun drawn. She tells him that it makes no difference if he shoots her because she already has a contract with the Prime Minister of Japan that whenever she dies, she will merely transfer that fate onto a random citizen in Japan. Kishibe asks her what she will do now that her precious dog has just been sent to hell, and she states that it will return to save her. She asks Kishibe if he knows the true power of the Chainsaw Devil. She mentions that any devil it eats has its name erased from existence. This begins to explain why the world of Chainsaw Man is so different. The Holocaust, the Nazis, the entirety of World War II, Arnalone Syndrome, Mount Hio Eruption, Nuclear Weapons, all of it. It was all eaten by the Chainsaw Devil, and anything eaten by that devil has its name erased. When that happens, all memory of it is wiped from the memories of everyone save a select group. Even the sixth sense, and apparently four of the five conclusions at the end of life were also erased. Even Makima can't remember the concepts. Only the devils who the chainsaw devil killed. Makima states that her ability allows her to control anyone that she believes is lesser than herself. She believes that if she can beat the chainsaw devil, she will be able to control it. Denji returns, jumping through the window and carves Makima apart, though her death is still impermanent. Hearing the phrase, help me, the chainsaw devil goes off to help. After all, as the hero of hell, he goes off and kills anything that gets in his way of helping someone. Going into a burger joint, he finds Kobeni who had quit the hunters to become a waiter. After getting chastised by her boss and then taunted by her friends, she utters help me in a joking way. Suddenly, Denji comes in. Over the course of this, he cuts off a bystander's head, the mascot's head, her boss's head, and the head of a co-worker. He then sits down, remembering his dream of having a non-rotten hamburger. He orders one, and as per their rules, they dance for him, which he dances to as he sits in the booth. They bring the burger, but Kobeni trips and spills the food on Denji, much to his anger. She quickly orders another one, as they all cry while dancing a second time. She goes to deliver it again, but trips and spills it on him a second time. She picks up the food off the floor and offers it to him, which he eats. He then remembers that he wanted to go on a date with the girl, so he kidnaps Kobeni and drags her with him to get ice cream, which she hates because it's vanilla. Then he wants to play a video game with her at an arcade, but she says that she can't because she has no money. So Denji carves up the ATM machine and takes the monies with him, forcing her to play it. During the game, Denji disappears and reappears on a roof across from Makima. Makima then springs a trap, calling all of her agents, each of which were ones that had been defeated or killed by her or people under her command, each of them a hybrid like Denji. She orders them to kill him, but they're no match for his power. He quickly rips them apart, but is shot into the atmosphere by the control devil, aka Makima. Denji, in space now, rips out his own heart and throws it down at the ground as his body reforms around it. He pulls up Makima and the other devils and eradicates them. Elsewhere, Kobeni is still dancing. She celebrates that she got a perfect score and looks back at Chainsaw Man. She asks why she's still dancing. Makima shows up and asks indeed, and then further questions why Denji hasn't eaten her yet. Makima mentions that it's because Kobeni isn't afraid of Denji anymore. She isn't afraid of the Chainsaw Man. Then it's revealed that most of the populace loves Denji now. 
he's a hero to them. They remember him defeating the Katana Man, the Bomb Devil, the Gun Devil. He's defeated so many villains and saved so many people, but that works against him, as a devil's power is based on how many people fear them. Now, very few people are afraid of Denji. Makima then uses Angel Devil's power to form a spear using 1,000 years of lifespan and throws it at Kobeni who is saved by Denji who takes the shot. Denji is wounded, incapacitated. Inside of Denji, power exists though. Pochita tells her that Denji ate some of her blood and she would disappear if she didn't eat some of him. Pochita begs her to save Denji. Power agrees and eats some of Pochita. This allows her to burst from within Denji as the Blood Devil. It attacks Makima and her people. She summons the Zombie Devil to resurrect them as zombies. She commands Power to give her Denji, but she refuses. She states that Denji is hers and runs away. But as she runs away, she's cut down by the Mantis Devil. She escapes with Denji into an alleyway. Within a trash can, she is with Denji. She asks him why he isn't fighting back, and he states that he's lived long enough and accomplished all of his dreams. She asks if he's upset by her death, and that he would just lay down and die, and he replies that he would. She calls him a dummy and tells tells him that when a devil dies, they revive in hell, and so that she would likely be his enemy the next time they meet. And so, she tells him to go find her and remind her to be the real power, and then makes a contract with him, with his end of the bargain being fighting her again. Denji then awakens in the can alone, calling out for power and crying. By the can is Kishibe, who's reading a newspaper. He asks if he's truly Denji, and Denji responds with a peace sign. Kishibe leads Denji and Kobeni to a safe house where they speak. Denji and Kobeni talk about things they always wanted and never got. Kobeni wants Denji's ability to resurrect as she's afraid of death. Denji says that his life is full of hardships and grief and that he just wanted a normal life. Kobeni tells him that he was living a normal life. Denji's shocked by this development. As he watches the TV, he notices how many people adore Chainsaw Man and he discovers a new dream. He doesn't just want to live a normal life, he wants to be a celebrity. That is why he wants to be Chainsaw Man. He doesn't just want toast and jam anymore, he wants to wake up to steaks. He doesn't want a girlfriend, he wants 10. He craves to live the best possible life, a life of leisure and luxury. Kishibe tells him to dream on, because so long as Makima is after him, he will just die. Denji continues to watch TV all night and begins to contemplate on his past battles and Makima, how he can defeat her, or even if he wants to. Despite everything, he still likes her. He makes his decision. We next see the Chainsaw Man sitting in a graveyard where Makima and her crew show up to face him. Chainsaw Man gets up and Makima states that he doesn't deserve to be the Chainsaw Man. She says that the real Chainsaw Man doesn't wear clothes and doesn't talk. She states that he's just merchandise now and that people love him. While Denji may love it, the Chainsaw Devil will get weaker because of it. She allows the other devil hybrids to attack him and they begin to fight, but he was nothing like he was in the last battle and while he was stronger than the others, the numbers were overwhelming him. And when the zombies from the zombie devil came in, he was all but defeated. Makima states that there's nothing left to fear from him, so she goes over, revives him with her blood, and tells him to fight her one-on-one. -on -one. The Chainsaw Man stands up and they go at each other. However, the damage done by Chainsaw Man doesn't last, and Makima is the one getting in lasting damage. In the end, she removes both his arms and then calls him unworthy. She removes his heart and looks at Pochita and carries it with her. She picks up a cigarette and takes a single drag before putting it out. She then tells Pochita that they'll be so happy together and that now she finally controls him. Suddenly, Denji appears behind her in his human form with a regular chainsaw and carves her down the chest. She's confused to say the least, but it's then revealed that Denji indeed has a contract with power and that she has become his heart in the absence of Pochita, who was the being she was fighting all along. He also mentions that the chainsaw he was using was made out of Power's blood and that it was wrecking her body. It's then that Kishibe's van pulls up and Denji finally looks down to her and tells her that he's sorry. Later at his apartment, he's sitting there. Kishibe tells Denji that he doesn't think he can kill Makima and if he fails, he will likely die. Denji states that he's lived long enough and if he does die, oh well. So Kishibe leaves and Denji opens the fridge, stating that he's hungry. He opens the fridge and begins to cook something up to eat from the meat within. As he eats, he mentions whether something tastes good or not, then is sure to eat it all. In the end, he mentions that, overall, Makima tastes pretty good. Indeed. The only way he can end Makima is by eating her. Later on, Denji meets Kishibe in the park and is now in possession of Nyako, or Miaui, and the many dogs Makima once owned. Kishibe is confused how it was that Denji could beat Makima, and he states that at first she let her guard down, and he was able to sneak up on her because he assumed it was her to smelling the Chainsaw Man, meaning that she never smelled Denji. She never really wanted him for him. She wanted Chainsaw Man. He then mentions that his attacks weren't really considered attacks. 
he found a loophole in her contract because he didn't attack her. He wanted to eat her. Not to kill, but to become one with her, which he viewed as an act of love instead of violence. And since then, Makima hasn't revived. That was until a little girl bites Denji's hand. Feeling the bite and looking into her eyes, he knows who this girl is. Makima. Kishibe corrects him. It isn't Makima, as Makima is gone. She is the control devil reborn after being killed. He said that she was found in China and that her name is Nayuta. He says that he doesn't want her to be found by the Bureau, as if she was, she would ultimately be turned into a new Makima. But instead, she needs to be raised like a normal person. Denji takes her into his care. He then goes home where he sleeps with the dogs, letting her have his sleeping mat. In his dreams, he sees Pochita telling him that his dream was to be hugged, and that the control devil's dream was to have an equal relationship, or a family, and that can only be achieved through a lot of hugs. And so Denji hugs her as she sleeps. We skip forward. The next part is just revving up, pardon the pun, ah, uh, that was actually unintentional. But the next part so far doesn't introduce Denji for a while. Instead, we meet Asa Mitaka, a girl who always seems to screw up when she needs to be strong. She ends up in a bad place after accidentally killing the kind chicken devil named Bucky. This leads to her being bullied in school, but it keeps getting worse. Apparently, her teacher has a thing for her, just as she does another student, but that other student happens to have a contract with the Justice Devil. She shreds open Asa's head, leaving her for dead. She's only rescued when a strange devil finds her and says that it'll save her life, but in exchange, she gets her body. The devil identifies itself as the War Devil, and its job is to kill the Chainsaw Devil. It also has strange eyes, just like Makima, as it's revealed that apparently the War Devil and Control Devil were two devils based after the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. She goes back to school after looking for Chainsaw Man, but instead finds a friend. She and this friend end up having a lot of fun. That is, until the Bat Devil, yes, that Bat Devil, shows up and attacks them. Swallowing them up, it's killed a second time when crushed as Denji saves a cat from the Cockroach Devil. He's acclaimed on television for this feat. In the latest part, Denji is faced with his high school life colliding with his Chainsaw Man life, and facing off against Yoru, the War Devil. He tries to talk up Chainsaw Man and hopes to reveal his identity soon enough. He ends up joining the Devil Hunters Club and meeting Asa, who doesn't outright kill him despite Ward demanding it. In the end, Asa's friend, Yuko, ends up making a contract with the Justice Devil, and reveals that she also had been bullied, and is now going to stop bullying by destroying the school. But in the end, she's confronted by Asa and Denji and defeated. This doesn't save Yuko though, as she has become a devil herself and leaves to seek help from a devil hunting relative to find a cure. Later, Asa sees Denji collecting used cigarettes and passing them off as new to sell to the homeless. Asa sees him as in between a cat and a criminal, not exactly worthy of death, but still disgusting. War convinces her that killing Denji would create a weapon powerful enough to kill Chainsaw Man. In truth though, War really wants to kill Chainsaw Man in order to gain access to the abilities of the World War II Devil and the Nuclear Weapon Devil. I can only wonder why. Of course, Asa and Denji then go on a date where Denji only wants to see penguins, but that's something that we'll talk about another time. And that is the life of Denji up until this point. Thankfully, the new chapters are releasing now from the second part, and I can't wait to read what comes up next. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to drop a comment as well and tell us what your favorite part of the series was. Can't wait to hear from you. Peace!